Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's nice to be here. And uh, I'm representing my uh, small software company, run to solve so, uh, and uh, what we work on is uh, this, this commodity here, uh, steel. And uh, how many, I'm wondering if you all even have an idea how many uh, tons of steel are sold like this as coils, uh, like around the world. Anybody have an idea? Like Europe or US or, in the US it's about, a hundred million tons a year is formed into buildings or roofs uh, in the US and it's something similar in Europe. And uh, so we usually sell this steel at about a dollar a pound. Uh, or, and uh, so if you do that math, it ends up being, that's maybe like two billion, three billion, four billion dollars a year. It's a huge market. And uh, uh, what's interesting is, uh, so, what we do with this steel is it comes like this, and then the, what you want to do to make it into buildings uh, or, or shape, it like, sh shape it like this. So, uh, and uh, when you shape the steel like this, it like, like it's very fun, interesting. There's an infinite number of shapes, but with that comes like uh, some overwhelming uh, engineering choices, uh, like, uh, like what shape should it be? Uh, what's the optimum shape? Uh, how w does it behave? Uh, and uh, so that's what uh, my company has been working on uh, since 2019, I would say. And, and uh, we ended up with working with Julia just because, so the behavior of, of these, so we go from the commodity steel, the 100 million tons of it, to shapes like this, and then we want to try to understand how it behaves, and we, we need to solve equations like this. Just for a single member, it's something like this. Like, the, the thin-walled part of it makes it complicated. Uh, and then, of course, like, you have, this is just for one member, like one column or one beam. Then uh, you have a whole building, and it becomes, like, very a very interesting problem uh, with, um, uh, also considering wind and snow and everything like so when you start combining everything it it's uh it uh yeah it's a it's a very challenging and can be a, like a, a very large problem to solve and so that's why we went to julia uh and so over the last four or five years we've uh, written a bunch of packages that i think probably maybe no not many people in the world even know about like they're out there uh, I've listed them to the right, but things like just solving the behavior of a of a beam or a column, or characterizing the 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 uh, properties of a cross section, or um, uh, yeah, like even interacting with commercial programs like maybe some of you have heard of like Abacus or Elastina or or Ansys like uh, so uh, and. Uh, the what was interesting what's interesting to me is that when I come in here and talk uh, and listen to all of the CIML talks like the tools that everyone is is using um, are using for CIML are actually like very useful for solving these uh, structural building large-scale problems like the nonlinear solve symbolics solving differential equations uh, and even uh, connecting to uh, services like AWS. So, like if we're we're writing, uh, putting our Julius stuff into containers and interacting and saving things, the S3 buckets. Like we haven't even have the SDK for that. And like, uh, and uh, yeah. So it's a. Uh, anyway, like um, so, there's actually quite a bit of uh, like capabilities in this in this realm now, uh, and uh, I'll just show an example. So I highlighted thin walled beam. I mean, it's just a few lines of code, like where we take the system of nonlinear, it's nonlinear differential equations, like fourth order equations, and we, we just uh, write them. Uh, it was a little bit of a challenge. I'll, I'll, I'll have to say that differential equations.jl did not work exactly correctly, or uh, not correctly, but like well for us. Like I had to do some modifications, like uh, do more like uh, finite different stuff to like get to the governing equations, but I can get them. And then I can solve that system of equations uh, with the nonlinear solver, and I can get the answer, the deformation of a, of a member. 
Um, and uh, it's awesome. And it's pretty fast. And it's like, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I couldn't quite do it in other languages. So uh, it's, it's, it's great. And, and we can do cool things like this. So this is like a, a hat shape that would be, there's probably, there's probably hats right above us in the ceiling here. Um, and like uh, we can get the buckling behavior of it and display it with awesome programs like Maki. And, like, uh, and all of this is now like uh, moving. Like, so it's been four years now and now we're like actually producing production apps. We're selling uh, APIs like, uh, that predict this kind of behavior. We are getting some like web apps. Uh, this is just one example of uh, a roof. Um, so like roofs are like a, a huge, huge market around the world, metal, metal building roofs. And so uh, we, the back end here is a Julia in a, in a container and, and even racks. Like when you go to like the grocery store or a Costco, like have you, you have, there's Costco's in Europe and everything, right? Or where you, you all live or like those stores, like those, uh, like, uh, uh, what do you what do you call them? Um, like hardware stores where like there's these really tall racks with stuff stacked on them. Like uh, that's a huge market uh, around the world as well. And so there's Julia uh, code predicting the behavior of those racks, like uh, the design and the and helping with the design of those racks. Um, and uh, yeah, so so I would say like overall the goal now is like we have these APIs running for single members and some systems. But like the exciting part of uh, Julia is like uh, trying to do more of the high performance stuff and tackle that, that big building that I, what I was showing you before. And so I would say maybe the next five years we'll be spending uh, trying to, to address those like uh, bigger structural system problems. And thank you very much. On time for questions? Anyone questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> I'm a very nice guy. <laughs> uh, uh, just a question a bit more about your uh, organization. I was curious whether you had the uh, uh, given your, uh, I don't know, the size of your team, whether you went through a, a fully integrated vertical integration of uh, Julia or you're more in interrupt uh, uh, kind of fashion, and uh, if you could uh, discuss a bit more uh, how you approach this uh, integration of Julia in, a, yeah. in your yeah, yeah. enterprise I mean, um, context. All right, I mean, there's, there's uh, so much to talk about there, but like, uh, what, what can I say? So the team is, um, the team are, are, were engineers. Most of us are academic like style uh, engineers uh, with coding backgrounds. Uh, we have recently hired like full stack developer to help with web applications so like um, but we're off we're almost always taking the Julia stuff and putting it in a docker and running it as an API like that's what we found is the best way because if I start talking to the so I work with big steel companies and if I go talk to their developer teams they uh, often are like what's Julia I don't know I don't want to get involved so uh, so how we get around that is just we run the APIs for them and uh, then they don't, th we just offer the answer. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much how uh, we have succeeded, I would say. All right, we have room for one more question. The longer we think, the less room we have. <laughs> I think maybe more questions during lunch time. It's, it's okay, actually. Uh, my wife, my, my wife is here. Thank, like, thank you for coming to support me. We're on our way to uh, Dusseldorf after this, and then we're headed to, to Bodrum, Turkey. So, oh. uh, but so I won't. If, but you can always find it. You can always find me uh, on uh, GitHub, LinkedIn, the Julius Slack, whatever. I, I'm happy to answer questions. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.